Right, this is me about to start chopping the onions. Can you see it? I don't think it's going to work. All you'll see is the top of it. You won't actually probably see. And I might take it off the hook when I've... I hate chopping onions. I'm so weak in the arms. And I feel I'm going to chop my fingers off at any minute. And of course I've got rubbish knives and rubbish everything else. In a minute I'll take you around the kitchen so you can see all the delights. I wish I had a camera crew. Angela Lawson has it so easy. I never came into the kitchen. I would come down at six o'clock from working upstairs in my office. I'll have a dry sherry. That's a period jug. Nobody's had a dry sherry since 1963. I'll have a glass of white wine. And I'll sit on the couch there reading the evening paper. And Margaret would be in the kitchen doing magic. And I would never know what the magic was going to be. I never asked her. And while I was sitting reading the paper, she was not allowed to talk to me. That was my ritual. So I never talked to her. Now and again, I could catch her. She was not a boozer. As she was cooking, having a quiet glass of red wine. And I would shout at her, have you opened that bottle? Because in those days, we tend to share one bottle in the evening over the meal. And often we'd argue over it, and I would paint a line or pencil a line on it and say, you've had more than me, the rest of this bottle is mine. Oh, yes, it is. And when I used to moan that I'm getting fat, and I'm getting overweight, she would say to me, don't moan to me. The solution is in your own hands. If you gave up drinking, you would lose a stone immediately. And I would say, on your bike, I'm not giving up wine. I have very few pleasures in life. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean that. That was a cruel, silly thing to say. Anyway, it's one of my best pleasures, so I'm not giving it up. But guess what happened? A year after she died, by which time I was doing my own cooking, after a fashion, and I was eating proper meals, I put on a stone. How do you, how do you um, explain that? In theory, I was grieving. I was making my own food. I, I was tr not eating uh, any more than I had before. In some ways, I ate less bread. Mark was a great bread fan. But I suppose I was eating, uh, drinking more, so I put on a stone. And when I meet her in heaven, or whatever, meet her on the heath in the years to come, I will say to her, look, I've put on a stone since you died, so your theory was bollocks. Ha, 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 ha. I'll do one of the red... Oh, I usually, what am I doing? Yeah, I do. I forgot my own system. I always do the onion first. That is not a tip. It's just the theory is the onion takes longer and the onion gives... When the onion starts melting, does onion melt? It gives a nice sort of aroma and a nice... Oh, God. Let's see a mess of this. This is not instructional, by the way. I'm not teaching anybody, any grannies watching. They've already suck eggs and chopped tomatoes. I'm only doing it because Richard, my son-in-law... What's funny is my son, Jake, is an absolutely brilliant cook and does most of the cooking in his house. Richard, my son-in-law, is an absolutely amazing cook and does everything. So the, the next generation after me, the blokes, have turned out just as good at cooks as the women. Whereas in my generation, my, mother, my father couldn't cook. I can't think of anybody in my exact generation who cooks. They were all like me. Male chauvinist pigs in that sense. So Richard came around a few weeks ago and I was making some amusing dish which a friend had given me to make a recipe. It was mainly potatoes. And he couldn't believe I'd done it and he had it and it was delicious. So he said, instead of doing my boring tortoise on the video, I should do me boring cooking. So this is the boring cooking. Ready, ho? Right, you can see what's happening. 
I'm about to do the aubergine and I'm about to do the pepper in a minute. Right, I've got the vegetables on and you can see them. Isn't the colour of the vegetables lovely? You can see the onion, you can see the peppers. Oh, I've put the uh, pepper. Oh, I haven't put the garlic in. Isn't it lovely? In a way, it's a shame to cook it. I should have sort of fresh raw vegetables, which I actually like. And that colour will disappear. I must get the... You see the Portuguese towels in the background? I'm very fond of them. And there is my... I've changed since Margaret was alive. I've repainted. And I've got these trendy cut... These trendy um, blinds from... The watching. Look! They go up and down on their own. Isn't that brilliant? A very exclusive shop, you wouldn't have heard of it. It's got a fancy foreign name, it's spelled I-K-I-A. Oh look! Out the window is my tortoise in the garden. This is uh, the kitchen. That's the new worktop. There is the little chicken licking. Oh, poor little thing, waiting to be incinerated or burned. That's my... Oh, one of the things I did, I got rid of my rubbish thing. This is for Margaret. I now have my rubbish, my food bin, under there. It comes out, bingo, and you put it on, push it back in, and you can't see it. Needs it. That is my... Oh, I never use that. That's why I don't know. That's my uh, dishwasher. And that is my... Behind there is my washing machine and there's the fridge. So it's quite a neat little uh, uh, a neat little cabin of a thing. When we bought this house, this was, a, there was no window, this was the coal cellar and we converted it into a bedroom. So this was originally a bedroom and in this room Jake, our son, was born in 1966. Margaret, we had one child by then, born in the hospital. And the second one, Jake, we decided to have him at home, to have a home birth. And I actually went to father's classes, which the Royal Free was doing. And uh, Jake came out very, very quickly. And a stupid little boy, he came out with the cord, his own cord, round his neck strangling him and came out so quickly his the midwife was caught somewhere I was trying to ring here anyway I untangled his cord and I like to think as I've told him a million times I saved his life because it was a home birth we were left with a placenta and I read a piece somewhere about some dopey American hippie woman who ate her placenta and then I heard a woman a couple of streets away had done it. So I thought, I'll do that. It would be an interesting thing to do. And I was, I think I was editor of the Sunny Times Money Pages at the time. Money Pages, what I'm saying, Women's Pages. I get a column out of it. Anyway, I cooked the placenta and I cooked it with onions. Because people say if you cook it with onions, you can pretend it's liver and onions. I think I put some bacon in as well. And I cooked it, and Margaret was appalled at the very idea. And I had two bites of it. It was horrible. So I went out in the bottom of the garden, it's still there somewhere, dug a huge hole. Because the midwife said, if you have the birth at home in those days, it's your problem to get there for you to censor. And you shouldn't, you should take it to your proper incinerator. You shouldn't put it in the dustbin and don't put it in the garden she said or the rats will get it anyway I dug a deep hole and buried it and we never but the garden's been going beautifully since then right I'll just turn over I'm actually going to have a coffee now and then I'm going to go an hour of work I'm doing a book about a year a year in the life of the heat which I started this time last year practically and when the lockdown came, I thought, oh, bloody hell, my book is going to be totally out of date. Because it's all pre-lockdown. 
And then I thought, no, I'll do two thirds of the book before the lockdown, and the next third will be post lockdown because it's an enormous effect of the lockdown <coughs> on the heat, as it has been in everybody's life and the, the world, and on how the heat is organised and things that don't work and the changes. So, and the people I've been interviewing now. Like a local publican has just hired 30 people and spent millions. Uh, he's been totally affected by it. So the book will be a tale before and after the canor canary. I can't remember the, the, the coronavirus. And it'll give it, which I never thought it would, it'll give the book analysis. Right, I'm just going to have a coffee and do an hour's work on that book, and I'll leave this to some simmer. If you can smell burning, please give me a shout. Bye. Right, here is my aubergine dish finished. Actually, when I was gardening and writing something, some of it got burned. Can you see the brownie bits? But I quite like the brownie bits. They're rather subtle. And with this smell, is delicious. Don't think that's really good? And we'll have a look at the chicken licken to see how that is going on. Mmm. I'm having it at... Oh, it's so sweet. Isn't it nice? Poor little chick. Seems ashamed. I've been basting it. Can you see? I'll do a little bit of basting now, but you don't want to see basting. Okay, you can. Mmm. It's landing tears as I spill it all over my... The awful thing about cooking, I don't actually enjoy it. I get no pleasure out of it. It is not therapy. The only pleasure is I get out of eating it because I make things. That's a bit of a uh, thing sticking up. Garlic. The only pleasure is eating it because I'm making stuff that I like. But then when I'm cooking it and having thought about it, I think, oh no, somebody's just going to eat it, and that somebody is me, and then I'm going to start again tomorrow, think of something to cook for myself. Luckily, this will probably last me not five days, but four days. So wish me luck stuffing my face. Bye. <music>